can see it, uh, this whole passage is based on this idea of a little while. It's a sliding concept. One little while is the three days he'll be dead. And then they'll see him again alive. <coughs> Another little while is the history of the world until he comes back to end it. A little while compared to eternity. Another little while is uh, after his, he leaves, he's present. He's right here now. And we'll see him. Not with our bodily eyes that the apostles did, not unless he comes to us in a vision. But this little while. In other words, it means a lot of different things. And the explanation for all of them, he gives to us. I go to the Father. Meaning, I am going to the cross and in suffering and humiliation give my life in an act of incredible love to the Father for you. And when I go to the Father, I will be transformed. Even my flesh will be divinized. And so I can be present to you all the time. I dwell in you. Paul told us, I live now not I, Christ lives in me. And so it's a question of taking these words of the Lord seriously. A little while you'll see me. That little while could be during his mass. Know him. Grasp him. Realize he's present. Worship and love him. And be ready to suffer with him. Because you will weep and mourn, and the world will rejoice. You will weep, but I promise you, your grief will become joy. You'll see me. We'll be in union with each other. And then, in a little while, you'll die, and you'll see me. So, it's a mysterious promise of presence. It's another dimension to it. We have today's the Feast of Amir Fatima, one of the most powerful and influential visits of Mary uh, to us. You know, I guess unless we had our own vision, we don't know how to take these things seriously. Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, the Queen of Heaven, assumed into, into Heaven herself, visits the Earth. Try to count up. You know, there's Gabriel Van Dahl, there's Fatima, there's Medjugorje, there's Druids, of course, and uh, why is she coming? Almost all the last messages have been the counterpoint to uh, what Paul VI said in that famous audience many years ago. What is the greatest danger the church faces? He said, you may think, you know, given our culture today, you may think I'm a little uh, medieval. The greatest danger our church faces is the attack of the enemy, Satan. That is the greatest danger. It's, it's multiple. It's very, you know. Over here, yet, yeah, we're not tempted to quit because of persecution. But we tempted to wander away into comfort, power, money, fun, so our lady comes and says, pray, fast. That's not fun. Say the rosary every day. Be faithful. And as things start to develop, getting to realize she was right. How bad is it going to get? It's really up to us. You know, the Pope is in Fatima right now. And uh, he gave a talk just before he left. And he said, all the warnings, and they're multiple, are addressed to our free will. 
It's not inevitable. It's addressed to our free will. Are we going to pray? Are we going to be serious about our Christian life? This is what our lady came to talk about. Those three kids there at the nurse, they saw hell. Lucy had no problem staying faithful to her religious commitment as a nun because she knew that she had a vocation to be praying and interceding for the world. And so do we. You know, we, we dismiss these things. You can go to Lourdes and be uh, overwhelmed by the atmosphere. It's quite beautiful. I worked in the mass there all one day once and saw as much suffering as you can imagine. You know, bodies broken. You know, mm -hmm. All day. But what was overwhelming was the peace, the joy. It was there. Strengthening these people. They all weren't healed. But they were at peace. And they gave their sufferings to the Lord. And that's maybe why we're here this morning. So you see, it's addressed to our free will. This is what I recommend, that you pray, that you intercede, that you fast, that you say the rosary. Because the world is heading for a great destruction. It cannot go on like this. Millions and millions of babies killed every year. How long will the Lord tolerate that? He can't. We have built the evil into the system, and it will just recoil back on our heads. Whether it be physical, volcanoes, or whatever. We built this the, the evil into the system. Repentance. Repentance is that act by which God turns back the evil that our sins have let loose, and we have no way of turning back. But God does. And so these warnings, you see, are, are warnings of love. Can you imagine? Here's Our Lady in total bliss with Christ forever. And she spends her time coming around to get us to get our act together. And she's weeping. Our Lord is weeping. How can they weep and be in such bliss? We don't understand that. But it shows you how much they love us. You see, a little while, you won't see me. A little while, you will. Take time today to just ask the Mother of God, what do you want me to do? Explain to me what I'm supposed to do. Measure Gloria, our lady asked for a day of fasting on bread and water. Remember? You know, the rosary. Why the rosary? Oh, I, I can't ever get through it. I get it all mixed up and my mind goes all over the place. Just keep practicing. Show up. Read the encyclical of John Paul II on the rosary. When you pray the rosary, you get with Mary and you gaze on these things in your heart. Ask her to give you her heart. Be there with her when she says yes. Learn what a yes to God really is. No little codicils on the side. Yes. That yes is the entrance of salvation into this world. The visitation. Here comes the new law to visit the old law. What happened with those two? Did you ever ask yourself? Hey, we only got one, only got 20. We only got 20 mysteries. Why is the one of these two women visiting each other? Is that such a big deal? Why is it a mystery? Did you ever ask yourself that? You know, we're, maybe you're too pious. I'm not. Why are we doing this? You see? And let them show you. Let them show you the meaning of that. You know. The power of Jesus coming in the womb of his mother, hardly more than a zygote. He's just been conceived. And he baptizes John in the spirit. And John leaps for joy. Now we carry Christ. If 
and we were to nurture that presence in us and be faithful to him. When we walk in the room, people would start to sing. So let's be sure we pray today. And remember, you see again, this inevitability is such an illusion. Satan's rattle is the television. That's where it rattles and we'll get mesmerized and frightened and paralyzed. Instead of saying, God is God and he dwells in me. So spit on you, Satan. I can trust my God even if I suffer. Can my God give me joy in suffering? He's done it for millions.